Howdy there folks, Nige G7 CNF here. I've been asked to make a YouTube video featuring the Anon 100D's phase noise cancellation capabilities, which is what you will find with diversity. The beauty of the 100D and the 200 is that they both have two ADCs which can be phase locked together uh, thereby presenting an opportunity to be able to adjust the phase and the magnitude of incoming signals against between the two receivers in order to enhance or subtract. Now before I dig into this very quickly uh, I should point out that there's a uh, a great deal of uh, text uh, across the internet and you'll see reviews at EHAM for things like the MFJ 1025-1026 phase noise cancellation uh, devices and there are a lot of people that simply say that the technique doesn't work. The truth is the technique works extremely well but the, it is an art form particularly with devices like the 1025 and 1026. Uh, but the the magic to success is ensuring that your noise sense antenna is uh, presents a signal of the unwanted interference at a magnitude which is equal to or in excess of the magnitude of that signal presenting on your wanted RX antenna because it is a, a simple uh, arithmetical subtraction one from the other therefore if your interference source on the noise source antenna doesn't have sufficient magnitude there won't be enough of it to subtract from the identical signal coming in on the other antenna which will therefore uh, leave a residue so with that out of the way let's dig straight in I've programmed three frequencies into this radio where I've got some pretty unpleasant stuff going on in the spectrum and we'll see how the Anon 100, which is what I'm using with this uh, version of Power SDR, uh, how it performs with uh, its diversity function turned on. So let's go to top band. We've got a nasty switch mode power supply here, which uh, presents uh, right away uh, across um, MF really uh, from below, uh, well below top band to. Uh, beyond uh, 4 megahertz in fact. So let's just go in a little bit closer to that again. We enable diversity. Now with obviously with uh, the receiver source we're going to want RX1 and RX2 RX1 plus RX2 so that we can subtract one from the other to produce a final result. You then get a choice with the reference source to be either receiver 1 or receiver 2 and of course it depends which antenna you've got plugged into which port as to which one of these two will provide the better effects. So we enable the phasing control and as you can see from the waterfall there was a minor difference when I enabled it but with receiver 1 as the reference source it's uh, not working out too well so we'll try receiver let's try receiver 2 immediately you see there's quite a substantial change noise floor has gone down but the unwanted spur is still there pretty strong so we'll make some adjustments There we go. So, with phase noise cancellation turned off, we have a signal of minus 67 dBm, minus 66 point something by looks of it. With it enabled, minus 85, so roughly 1920 dB of noise cancellation achieved there. That's uh, pretty substantial. Right, we'll go to frequency 2. This is a local power line network device uh, of the home plug variety. Currently idling, not transferring data. Splattering right the way uh, across uh, HF. It's particularly unpleasant here. 
So again, we'll uh, try receiver one as the noise reference source. No, much not much effect here. Try receiver two. As you can see, there was a difference. With phasing turned off, we have a signal of minus 61 dBm, 60 to 61. With it turned on, minus 80 to 81. So roughly 20 dB of improvement in uh, signal to noise, which is what we want. Okay, finally then, we'll go to the third frequency I've programmed in. This is, would you believe it, a different power line network device, also of the home plug variety, uh, also equally as pernicious. So we'll try it with receiver 1 as the reference source. No. So we'll try receiver 2 as the reference. Again, there we have it. So enabled minus eighty four, disabled minus sixty four. So again, uh, roughly another twenty dB of noise cancellation achieved using this technique. So as you can see, it's extremely effective, but the process will only be effective provided your noise sense antenna can see the unwanted interference at or above the same level that it presents on your wanted RX antenna. Uh, someone recently also asked me about the noise blanker capability, so I thought, well, you know, this would be a good opportunity to uh, demonstrate that one as well quickly. So, uh, noise blanker one. Oh, look. Well, that's certainly um, effective, would you not agree? If we add in the phase noise cancellation as well, well, look at our noise floor now. I think you can agree this is uh, quite a superb result. Yeah, considering I am a suburban amateur radio operator, and be sat with noise like this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, everywhere across the spectrum. Thank you very much, Ofcom, for your failure as a spectrum regulator and market surveillance authority. Putting that aside, no doubt, we still at least have some reparation against the onslaught of these uh, awful uh, interference sources across the spectrum. That's noise blanker too. Um, there are a host of different uh, algorithms that you can select for that, but uh, I'm finding that uh, noise blanker one is um, particularly effective, which is obviously good news. So there we go, folks. Let's just switch that off quickly and pop back the demonstration for phase noise uh, cancellation. There we go. On. Off. On. And. Off. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope that this little demonstration has been helpful in explaining the. Uh, demonstrating the capability of HPSDR with two ADCs. It's very good. Thanks for watching. 
7 threes, G7, CNF.